Hey, what's up guys? Figured I'd do another cooking video. As I live alone, I often have to cook, so why not film it sometimes? I'm just feeding me, myself, and I, so... Anyway, I figured I'd film it. Um, something a little bit different. It's not really a whole meal. Uh, what I'm showing you today is going to be either a side dish or a steak topping. Um, and what I would do, oftentimes I'll change the actual ingredients if I'm going to put it over steak, but the same exact recipe, um, you know, altered a little bit would be great on steak. In fact, what I did last to explain, you know, what I'm talking about, um, to do the same thing only for the ingredients, just use uh, mushrooms, a couple of small shallots, and some garlic, and that is absolutely amazing on a really good grilled steak, all right? But today, I'm using mushrooms, an onion, and some squash, all right? So, just altering it a little bit, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll chop this kind of rough, and this will be a side dish for dinner, you know, your, your veggie on the side. Now, the way I'm making this is the flavorful way. Of course, you can um, omit the butter and uh, have a little less, you know, fattening uh, type meal. But this is something where it's a very small portion. It's the side of the meal. And basically, you pair this with some kind of a protein, whether it be chicken or fish, whatever. But uh, in fact, chicken marsala is one of my favorite dishes. Now, I haven't had it in a long time because, uh, because I've been just eating better. And it is kind of a fatty, uh, heavier meal. Uh, perhaps that's something I can do more when it comes, you know, the weather gets colder. It's not really a summertime dish. I've been eating a lot lighter because of the fact that it is summertime and, you know, there's no stews or anything like that. Not a lot of heavy cooking. Mostly grilling, mostly light, quick, easy meals. But uh, I will show chicken marsala in the future because it is literally one of my favorite meals ever. This is just a little spin on it. And we are obviously getting the flavor from the marsala uh, cooking wine, which this is non-alcoholic. I'll go over that in a second. But anyway, the ingredients for this specific dish, which is just a vegetable side dish, is going to be uh, one package of baby portobello mushrooms, or baby bellows. We're going to a little salt and pepper, one squash, about medium size, one uh, small onion, red or white, doesn't really matter, or ye red, yellow, or white. Reds, of course, could give you a little bit more of a punch with the flavor. Uh, a little bit of butter. No, we're not using all of this. We're just going to use a little bit of it. You need some olive oil, some marsala. Now, I got this from my grocery store, this is not Marcella wine, it's just specifically for cooking, it's not alcoholic. Uh, I don't really, I've cooked with both the alcohol and this, and they both come out the same. I mean, you're actually cooking it for a little bit, so you don't have to worry about the alcohol burning off if you are, you know, using the alcohol version. But, uh, anyway, the last ingredient here is just a little bit of fresh parsley. So, uh, I'm going to remove everything here except for what I have to prep, and we'll go through the motions. All right, so the first thing we deal with is our mushrooms. Now, before I even get to that, let's talk about today's knife of choice. This is the Cold Steel uh, Kitchen Classic Chef Knife. All right, a lot of people ask me, why do I cook with folding knives and, you know, pocket knives, fixed blades? Why not use a kitchen knife? Well, I, I do have a beautiful kitchen set. However, uh, I do it just for the fun of it. That's all it's about. I mean, this is a beautiful knife. Yes, when I'm not filming, I will use a kitchen knife oftentimes. And I do have a different knife for every job I would need in the kitchen. But to use, you know, a Spyderco or some kind of a bench made for the cooking video just makes it more fun. There's no real, real reason for it. I do use kitchen knives all the time. So anyway, what I want to do is first, obviously, just open the package. Now with mushrooms, first thing you want to do is clean them. All right, because they will have dirt attached to it. Now what you want to do is you don't want to run it under water because they're very porous and they will soak up uh, all that moisture and it'll change the texture on you. So what you want to do is take a just a, a towel, get it a little bit damp. All right, you wanna just wipe them clean. All right, so just, you know, wipe all the dirt off and just do this with each one of them. You don't have to go crazy, you just wanna make sure there's no actual dirt, okay? Let's see how dirty the, the actual rag will get. But that's all you wanna to do to clean them. Don't run them under the water because if they get too saturated, They'll just, they'll be mushy and they'll, they'll change the whole texture and, and the whole experience. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these and I'll come back and I'll start chopping them up. All our mushrooms are now clean. So what I'm going to do is just kind of a rough chop. Now a lot of people uh, end up removing their, um, their stems, all right? I don't find that it's very necessary at all. I actually like the stems. It adds a little bit of texture to the dish. Of course, they're not going to be hard. They're all going to be, you know, sautéed and cooked. So it's no big deal. But you'll see that obviously we have a variety of sizes here. Everything from where to go? There it is. Everything from this guy to this guy. All right. So this one I'll just leave whole, and 
The other ones that are larger like this, I'll just cut into smaller pieces or chunks. All right, and you just want to make sure that everything's even. It doesn't matter how big they are as long as it's consistent. This way, everything will cook the same. All right, you don't want some mushrooms that are, you know, withered down to nothing, and then other ones that are barely cooked. All right, so as long as we have a, a general size, we're going to be fine. All right. Now mushrooms are very soft. I mean, you can do this exact same job with a butter knife. It's not even necessary to use the, uh, you know, kitchen knife, but I mean the uh, chef's knife. However, just to show that yes, I do use my kitchen knives. <laughs> That's why I'm I'm showing this. Now, of course, this is a a rustic. I call it. Uh, chop just basically a rough chop if you wanted to make them nice and purty and make each one You know quarters or something so that the presentation is with a stem on each piece go ahead and do that Doesn't really matter to me. I have nothing to show off here. Just going for flavor Of course you don't want the thing to look ugly the first thing we do with food is eat with our eyes So that's why a lot of times you do focus on presentation If it looks nice our brain says ooh, that's gonna taste good And what happens it usually does not always the case. Sometimes food look great and uh, tastes like crap. And other times it looks pretty ugly and it tastes great. So, never really know. Alright, so there's my rough chop and then my one little single one that's whole. Alright, so there's our mushrooms. I'm going to put those aside and then we'll get cutting the zucchini. Very simple. I do leave the skin on. It, it adds more color, more texture, flavor, the whole deal. If you want to, just go ahead and skin it first if you don't like that texture or anything. The first thing I'm going to do is just cut off the ends. All right, we'll chuck those because there's some harder pieces in there that we definitely don't want. And for this one, again, it's going to be kind of a rustic chop. So I'll half it, cut some bigger pieces, and then process it further. All right, so now. Just to make it stable, we always put it the flesh side down, you know, peppers, anything like that, just so that's not sliding around. When you have it the skin side down, it tends to be a little bit more slippery. All right, so I'm just going to kind of chop this roughly, as long as we're about the same size pieces, it's fine. Some of them end up being a little bit bigger, so you just go back and just chunk them. Speaking of chunk, Goonies was on yesterday. I think it was on TNT. I love Goonies. Awesome classic movie. So, it's just a tiny bit smaller. Just go through, see what the pieces are. Just want to be roughly the same size as the uh, mushrooms. Okay. All right. Again, very rough chop. No, no real signs to this. Just make it smaller. <laughs> so now I'm going to uh, put this aside, and then we'll cut our onion. Onion we do want small. We want a uh, I wouldn't say a super fine dice, but certainly a dice. We don't want chunks of onion. Okay. The onion we want to kind of just you know turn translucent, perhaps caramelize just a little bit for flavor, but just kind of get mixed in with the vegetables. We don't want it to be a predominant flavor. Just something that's kind of subtle. All right, so first thing you want to do is cut off the ends. And I half it as well. Now you can take the skin off. But sometimes it's a pain in the butt. What I'll do is just take the tip of your knife very carefully, just give it a little bit of a slit. It gives you something to grab onto to get that outer layer off. Then you can go ahead and just peel the whole thing off. Real simple. Now, a lot of times, you know, your eyes will get teary. You'll cry when you cut onions. It's because the when you cut into it, the juice is squirting up in the air, and it irritates the eyes and actually goes towards the tear ducts. All right, so there's a, there's a lot of different remedies to fix that. Some people um, will actually cook next to running water because the uh, the gas or you know the liquid that's kind of evaporating or coming off of the onion as you cut into it and break the cells, it is attracted to the water. 
okay, as, as opposed to your, ear, you know, eye ducts, it'll uh, go towards the running water. Now, people say, you know, do a, do an extra burning candle. That's supposed to help. I've tried both; they do help a little bit. It really just depends on the on the onion. Now, the best thing you could do is use a nice sharp knife. The sharper your knife, the least problems you're going to have with the onion, basically because you have a clean slice through the onion and you're not breaking up as much cells, therefore you're not releasing as much as that uh, liquid as you were if you were using a dull knife. All right, you want to cut the onions, you don't want to you know, tear them apart. So anyway, what we're going to do for here is I'm going to, I'm, by the way, I'm choking up on the knife a little bit. You don't really, you don't have as much um, control when you're back here like this. A lot of times you'll see professional chefs and they do, they'll cut like this, they keep the tip on the board, they'll just kind of go through and, you know, feed the food in with the fingers tucked back and everything. I don't do everything professionally. I don't cut myself when I'm cooking. The only times I cut myself is either when I'm playing with a knife just because I'm bored or if I'm flipping a ballot song trying something new. But you'll see, you know, they get real fancy and real fast and stuff. You don't have to do that. However, if you do pinch right uh, at the base of the, uh, the tang here on the blade, you do have a lot of control and you can keep it on the board. What I want to do is I want to keep this connected, all right, so I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm going to do about three quarters of the way. Come in and slide out. Now do this across the length of the onion. Now you can also come across and do a path like this. Just be very careful because now I'm cutting towards my finger. Now you've created two layers and a bunch of different rows. Now when I go ahead and feed it through, you'll see that I get a bunch of small pieces. Now you can start off from scratch and just keep chopping and chopping and chopping until you get you know pieces as small as you desire. But that's just an easier way to do it. It's how I always see them, you know professionals doing stuff. So again, come across the top. Don't cut the entire length. You want to cut about three quarters of the way in. All right, if little pieces come out like that, it's no big deal. Just set it aside. All right, now create a couple layers. It's a bigger piece here. So I'm going to do two layers, actually two cuts will create three layers, and then you come in and you get lots of little pieces. Quick easy way to dice an onion. All right. So now if I get in here and break it up into smaller pieces, I have about the, the size I want. They're not really tiny, it's not a really fine dice, but it's, it's about a medium size dice. It's exactly what I want. I'm going to sweat them out and the actual pieces of the vegetables which are supposed to be presented you know first in flavor when you take a mouthful of this it's supposed to be like wow you know great taste of the portobello mushrooms and the, the, um, the squash and then the onion is just a an afterthought you know just a little something something. So anyway got my vegetables chopped and we are ready to start cooking so I'm going to go over by the stove and we'll continue with the video. All right guys, so now I'm uh, over by the stove and I'm heating up my pan. I have nothing in it right now. Now this is an all stainless steel pan. If you have a uh, Teflon coated uh, pan or any kind of a black coating, non-stick kind of stuff, uh, you don't want to ever heat it with nothing in there because once you get to a certain temperature, that coating will release a poisonous gas in your house, which may not harm you that much. However, it will kill, like if you have little birds or if you have pets, it will harm them. All right, so just something that's very important. If you're cooking on high heat, don't turn a, a, uh, a flame on or electric stove. I have enough electric stove, but don't turn it on with an empty pan if you have a coating like that, a non-stick surface, all right? Because that will be dangerous to your, your pets and possibly to you. You might get sick from it, but you're not going to die. But if you do have like little canaries or something, they'll be dead. All right, so just be careful of that. Um, stainless steel, how do I know when it's hot enough? You do the old water trick if you've never seen this before. Just take a little bit of water, throw it in the pan. And see, all of a sudden, it evaporates right away. Sometimes if you throw enough water, you'll see it beat around. And what's happening is the water is so hot. I mean, yeah, the pan is so hot that it's creating, it's evaporating the water underneath the bead. So it literally floats around on its own little pool of gas. Pretty cool. Again, just to show you that. Kind of floats around. All right, so we're definitely hot enough here. You want to add... Just a splash of olive oil. It's not for flavoring, it's just for cooking. So we don't need too much. And then we want to mix in a little bit of that butter. All right, now I'm not gonna use a whole lot for this recipe, because I am watching what I eat. But you do need a little bit to cook. All right, so just let the butter melt down.
You're using a plastic spoon, just easier to, to, uh, to clean than a wooden spoon. All right. First thing to go in is our onion. Now, I didn't show this in the, the beginning of the video, but I am gonna add a little bit of garlic to this. I'm cheating, I'm just using the, you know, already minced garlic. It's good in a pinch. Throw a little bit in there. Who doesn't like garlic, right? It makes everything better. As long as you don't burn it. If you burn garlic, it's the most disgusting flavor you ever could have. It's extremely bitter. So just keep an eye on it. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to grab um, our squash first. Now I cut out enough vegetables where I'm going to have to do this in two sections, so I'll get grab some more onion, but um, I can't add everything to the, uh, the pan all at once. It's just too much. So, I guess I'm just going to start with about half of the, uh, the vegetables I prepared. Couple more pieces of squash. And what we're doing now is we're still cooking down the onions. We're getting the garlic to release all of its flavor. Let the onions sweat out. Like I said, they're going to caramelize a little bit, but we don't want to completely saute them. Kind of do its thing. I'm also going to throw in the mushrooms now. Again, roughly half of what I prepared. Oh, smells great. We'll let this cook for probably mm, two or three minutes. Again, don't want the, uh, the garlic or the onions to burn. In fact, right now, I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. Now this is also where we can add a little bit of our salt and pepper. Now don't go crazy, especially with the salt, because you can always add salt later, but you can't take it out. Once it gets too salty, the dish is just disgusting. There's nothing you can do about it, but if it's a little bland, you can always add it at the end. A little fresh cracked pepper. I happen to like pepper, so I'm putting a lot in. Now, at this point, I want to add my marsala. Again, this is just the cooking version, so it's non-alcoholic. If you're using the regular one, all you do is want to cook a little more, make sure the alcohol cooks out of it. I want to add roughly, I want to say half a cup here. Well, probably more towards a full cup. Now that we've got the flavor we want out of the onions and garlic and some of the vegetables, now we're actually cooking them because they are bigger pieces. At this point, I'm going to throw the lid on, all right, so that the liquid that I just put in the pan can steam up and, you know, cook the vegetables all the way through. All right, so I'm going to cook it like this on a medium heat, probably for, I want to say, five, six minutes, and I will be right back. All right, while that's cooking, I want to just uh, do a rough chop on this parsley. It goes in at the end of the dish, and just to be uh, 
just to make a quick note, you'll see that they're longer stalks like this. You just want to take the leaves off the end. You don't want these stems, even if you chop them up fine, they're too um, fibrous and you'll end up chewing on them and you don't really want that, uh, that experience. It's just it's not what you're supposed to do. It's just too rough. Roughage is good for you. I need a, uh, like fried shrimp or something, you know, or, um, you know, shipping a basket, that kind of a deal where the tails are actually cooked. I love eating the tails on shrimp. Some people look at me with, you know, like I have 15 eyes, but I think they're great. And I, I was always told it's good roughage, good for your system. But anyway, um, same deal. Just to do a rough chop on this. It's like 10% uh, flavor and 90% um, just for the presentation. Having fresh herbs and greens in your food, for some reason, first of all, it makes it seem a little fancier than it is. But um, just always makes it a little bit better. Just adds a little je ne sais quoi, as my friend says. All right, so that will go in towards the end. And let's go take a look at our, uh, our vegetables. And so five minutes later, we'll take the top off. Now we want to do is turn the heat down. Give this a good stir. And we want our sauce that we've created to thicken. All right. So if it's too loose or too runny, just keep the top off and just still let it cook. And obviously all the steam will evaporate and it'll thicken up. Now if you need to use a thickening agent, that's a whole different video. There's a, tons of things you can use for thickening. The very simplest thing to do is to put a little bit of wonder flour or you know regular flour well you know all-purpose flour something like that into a cup and use equal parts water to make kind of a uh, little bit of a paste just add it a little bit at a time now if you do something like that you have to bring it to a, a boil to get it to a thickest point the problem is if you if you tinker with that a lot of times you can get that that nasty flour taste so I don't want to do that what I'm gonna do is just let this continue to cook until the sauce thickens up how I like it now of course at this point if you wanted to you can add a little bit of cream maybe more butter that would certainly make it richer and more delicious in my case it's just uh, it's about being simple and a little bit more healthy so I'll just let this keep cooking and I'll get back to you when it's the consistency I like alright guys so uh, while I was waiting for my sauce to thicken I decided to just throw in the rest of the vegetables because everything cooked down and left me enough room in the pan so anyway it's um, turn the heat off completely now we went from kind of a, a rapid boil, um, and I put the lid back on again, you know, steamed and cooked the rest of the vegetables. And now I'm going to throw in my parsley. Just going to go right on top. Really simple. Just going to sprinkle around. We're going to save just eight. No, oh, we don't have to save it. If it was a bigger serving, we would throw a little fresh uh, parsley right on top of the dish. But because it's a side dish, it's not the main thing. We don't need to save it. So, going to mix that in. Let all that wilt over the veggies. And now we're just going to serve it. Real simple. All right, so there it is. Now, obviously, I'm showing to you as a side dish. Just put it in a ramekin and leave it on your plate or keep it separate or whatever. Um, I'm going to try it as is but it's not like a main dish now of course if you're vegetarian this would be great just you know fill a regular bowl filled up with this and it'd be awesome um but for me like i said it's a side dish or to put uh to pair with a uh, a protein of your choice i mean if you made this exact same thing and towards the end you threw in you know a bunch of shrimp and cooked them up that'd be awesome and that'd be a full dinner same thing if you wanted to just chunk up some chicken or even do some thinner strips and just kind of cook it in at the end as the uh, sauce is rendering down, it'd be awesome, it'd be a full meal. But for me, this is just, like I said, it's just an easy, simple side dish or the toppings to a, a steak or other kind of protein. So anyway, I'm just gonna try it here, see if it came out good, I wouldn't lie to you, I wouldn't just make something up. So I got a piece of squash there, and uh, the texture feels really good, you know, poking at the fork, it's not total mush, it still has a little bit of bite to it, but it's fully cooked, and I got a little mushroom there. So let me give it a taste. Hmm. I can honestly say it's it's delicious. It's uh, you know even how I cooked it, 
is uh, it's definitely a lighter version. If you want to use the cream and of course more butter at the end, you want to go equal parts of uh, cream and butter to the Marcella to get that actual thick, rich sauce like you would expect if you got you know, chicken Marcella as a dinner. And it's really simple. I don't really have to make a video on it. It's basically the same thing uh, for chicken Marcella, only you're putting it over a piece of chicken. I mean, you're not cooking the squash. It's just the mushrooms and stuff and the onions. And you put it over a piece of chicken and then melt some you know, mozzarella cheese on top. But um, anyway, it's awesome. It's, it's really, really good. So I just want to make a video, something different. It's a side dish. It's not just a main dish. I like to cook, bake, all kinds of stuff. So I figured I'd just share something different with you guys. So, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you make something similar to this or if you do make this, please comment. All video responses are always welcome. And I just I thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.